Singapore's 14th Parliament will open with a record number of female lawmakers, setting the stage for fresh perspectives on topics ranging from jobs to families. The 28 women, including non-constituency members of Parliament, make up 29% of the House, the highest proportion in the country's history. Isabel Lim with the story. The proportion of women MPs in the 14th Parliament is the closest the House has got to the 30% goal that former Minister Lim Hui Hua had set back in 2009. It's a huge improvement compared to 1965. Dr Chan Choi Seong was then the sole female out of 51 elected members. She remained the only woman in parliament until her retirement from politics in 1970. For the next 14 years, there were no women in parliament. But the numbers have grown steadily since 1985, when the trio of Dr Dixie Tan, Dr Aline Wong and Yu Fu Yi Shun were voted into the sixth parliament. Since then, the number of women has largely increased. They also make up a higher proportion of the House. And that's important for newly elected female MPs like Raisa Khan. In an email response to CNA, she said it shows other women that politics is a viable path, encouraging more to step forward in future. It's a point which Hazel Poir agrees with. I'm happy and proud that we have made progress in that area, but I also think that there's a lot of room for improvement still. Females being 50% of the population, right? Uh, to, to get a more balanced view in Parliament, we should also have similar representation. Besides making Parliament more representative, some say female representation might also improve the process of policy making itself. It will definitely, I think, broaden the thinking and also deepen the thinking behind policies that impact uh, women proportionally more. And these are issues such as caregiving, elder care, um, which affects women's lives, right, um, in a very significant manner. And the fact that uh, we have to face work care conflict, um, which is something that uh, begs more attention on a policy making front. And while they agree that women politicians' lived experiences will contribute to their understanding of such policies, Gender Equality Advocacy Group AWARE cautions that such issues shouldn't just be taken up by them. What we hope not to see is that it then deters male parliamentarians from taking up these same issues because they say, oh, now, you know, the women, this is uh, the female parliamentarians area, so let them speak up on it. We actually hope that that will not be the case. Yet, even with the record number of female parliamentarians this time, some say significant challenges remain for women entering politics. The fact that women are still seen to be the primary caregivers is a big structural barrier. Right, so, because you have family, then you have your work, full day work, and then you have your MP, your constituency to take care of. Right? So unless you have a really good partner or very strong family networks or maybe uh, no caregiving duties or limited caregiving duties, it's very difficult uh, to be able to do that. One political analyst agrees. While female representation in the House has improved, higher offices of government, such as the cabinet, are still largely male-dominated. But he says it might just be a matter of time before more women rise up the ranks. There's still a long way to go, um, but I think as, as women begin to establish themselves in this fairly new, new, new terrain called politics, that process of normalization, you know, will invariably result in, in not just more women uh, in, in parliament, but more women in, in government, uh, and certainly perhaps you know, uh, holding very uh, key positions you know, within the cabinet, and, and hopefully in the fullness of time, you know, a women prime minister as well.